Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nonic equation. What does nonic mean? It means we're going to get x to the ninth power. So it's a polynomial of degree 9. That's called a nonic. So I'll be presenting two methods. And the first method actually gives us a nonic equation. So when you expand this, you cube x cubed minus 6, you're going to get something that looks like this. Do you like it? This is what the nonic looks like. And there's two ways you can write it with the original and then put everything on the same side. But notice that I have x to the ninth. I'm missing some terms in between x to the sixth, x to the wait a minute. Can I not replace x to the third with another variable like y? Uh oh, we have an x. That just spoils everything, right? Bad x. Okay, because of this x, I can't do that. So this is a really bad nonic. It's not kind of convertible. So I kind of have to deal with the nonic formula, which does not even exist. I mean, even the quintic, like think about it, like quintic formula doesn't exist. You know how sad that is? We don't have anything in general for those. If it existed, it would probably be way too complicated. Anyways, this is the first method. You want to solve the nonic, you can, but that's going to be extremely hard, maybe impossible. You can numerically solve it though, right? With approximations and all that numerical stuff that I don't very much enjoy, but anyways, that's a method. So now here's what we're going to do. We're going to transform this equation. We're going to do a little bit of hocus pocus and do something nice. And that's called substitution. Yay! Here's what we're going to do. We're going to replace x cubed minus 6 with something. How about y? If I do replace x cubed minus 6 with y, then you might be questioning, why are you doing it? This gives me y cubed equals x plus 6, but it also gives me x cubed minus 6 equals y. Or x cubed equals y plus 6. Uh-oh, that's kind of interesting, right? Well, let me write the original so you get to see it. So this is what I got from these equations, right? From the equation. <laughs> I got two equations from a single equation. All right, so what am I going to do? I'm going to go ahead and add 6 to both sides. And yay, I'm going to end up with a system. Let's go ahead and copy this. You know how we can do that? I think there was a way to copy it, but I forgot. Anyways, I'm just going to write it again. y cubed equals x plus 6, and x cubed equals y plus 6. You see the symmetry? Awesome. So this is a really nice system of equations. And normally, you would not increase the number of variables, but we're doing it for a good cause, OK? So we can go ahead and do two things here, either isolate the sixes and set them equal to each other or we could subtract. Which one do you want to do? I like isolating the sixes. So y cubed minus x is six and it can also be written as x cubed minus y. So these two things are equal because they're equal to the same thing. So let's go and write it as y cubed minus x equals x cubed minus y. You see, it's what I meant by symmetry. Beautiful. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to put everything on the same side. So we're going to get y cubed minus x cubed minus x plus y equals 0. This looks like difference of two cubes. And let's go ahead and factor it. y minus x times y squared plus yx plus x squared. And then negative x plus y can be written as y minus x, which is 1 times y minus x. You see, y minus x is now a common factor. So we can factor it out. And then we get y squared plus yx plus x squared plus 1 equals 0. And yay, this is solvable. It's much, much better than a nonic. OK, how do we solve it? Easy. Zero product property. Such a weird name. But you set each factor equal to 0. That's what they mean by that weird name. y minus x equals 0 implies y equals x. Let's deal with this first, and we're going to come back to this because this is more complicated. OK, y equals x means what? What is y? y is x cubed minus 6. You see that? So I can kind of write y as x cubed minus 6. So now, since y is equal to x, I can replace y with x. And this gives me x equals x cubed minus 6. Hmm. How can I solve? this equation. Does this equation have a solution? Probably. But let's go ahead and isolate x cubed. 
because that's going to give us better eyesight. Look at that. Don't you think you can find a solution by guess and check? I hope you did. Yes. Can I say it? X equals 2 is a solution. Yay. I mean, you could find it by factoring too, but that would be painful. I'll show you what we're going to do next. But it's better to find a solution first. So, x equals 2 works because 8 equals 2 plus 6. Makes sense? So now, I can go ahead and factor it by putting everything on the same side first. You see? It's hard to see that x equals 2 would be a solution here. I mean, I, x squared minus x minus 6 is easily factorable, but the, the cubic case is a little tricky. Okay, now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to rearrange the terms, so I'm going to write it as, this should be followed by 2x squared, so that when I factor out x squared, I'm getting a factor of x minus 2, because the factor theorem says, if x equals 2 is a solution, then x minus 2 is a factor. Make sense? Okay, and I'm getting it from here, but there is no x squared, so I have to undo it, but then that needs to be followed by 4x. You get the idea? So notice that this coefficient is 1, this coefficient is 2, and the power is going down by 1 because I do need x minus 2, which is double this, but the degree is going down. You get the idea? Hopefully you do because it's a really cool method of solving things. And then this should be followed by 3x to get negative x. Minus 6 seals the deal and we're done. Factoring by grouping, yay. We can factor out x squared, that gives us x minus 2, no surprises. 2x, x minus 2, and 3x minus 2. Awesome. And it's equal to 0. Now we can go ahead and take out x minus 2. We already know x equals 2 is a solution, but still do it. x squared plus 2x plus 3. Can we factor this? Looks like 3 and 1. No. 3 and negative 1. No. This is not factorable because the solutions are not even real. Don't tell anyone. But that's the case. So what do we do? Well, the solutions are going to be complex. Wait a minute, what were we looking for? We were looking for a nonic and we ended up with cubic. Don't worry, we'll get back to the other piece. But from here, we get the following solutions. You already knew x equals 2. The other solution is going to be negative b plus minus the square root of b squared 4 minus 12. That's a negative 8. So it's going to give me the square root of 2 root 2 with the imaginary guy divided by 2a, which is 2. Awesome. This can be easily written as negative 1 plus minus root 2i. And doesn't that remind you some complex numbers? No, not really. This is not a special one. I, I thought about maybe e to the power i pi over 4, but that's not the case. Too bad. Anyways, that's just still a complex number. Good. Now, let's go back to this. How do we solve it? Well, this one doesn't have any real solutions, first of all. Let me tell you. Why? Let me explain. Here, let's clean up this area. One thing to keep in mind is when you factor equations like these, usually one of the factors is good, the other one is bad, meaning that you're not going to get real solutions. Because this part can be written as y squared plus yx plus x squared over 4. Notice that this is a perfect square. Do you see it? Hopefully you do. And then add the 3x squared over 4 to get x squared plus 1. Now this part... Hopefully you see, the, uh, this, is, this method is called completing the square because this is y plus x over 2 squared. Sorry, if you hear the meow of my cat, she's not hungry. She just wants attention. And she'll get it in a couple of minutes. Anyways, so notice that we have something squared plus some other positive or non-negative terms. So this can't be zero. Make sense? No real solutions. You want to go with the complex? That's going to be a little heck tick. Or should I say hexic? Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.